Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start with my Linux series playlist. As in my previous video, I have told that Linux is the first thing that we need to know to start our career with DevOps. If you haven't watched that video yet, then I will be sharing the link in description. Please check that out. So for all the people who are already connected with me on Insta might be knowing about the Linux command that we need to know as a DevOps engineer. But in this video, I will show them practically. So without any further delay, let's quickly get started. Let's first discuss about these two terms that is terminal and shell. So what is terminal? Terminal is a kind of app that handles the input from user and displays the output. For example, if we are using Mac OS, then we have iTerm2 or if we are using Windows, then we have Putty. So here I am using Mac actually. So I am using iTerm2 app. Okay. So now comes shell. So what is shell? Shell is a command line interface. It provides an interface between the user and the kernel and executes the program called as commands. So whatever command we are trying to execute, those are actually being executed using the shell. And terminal is just the show source where we are entering any of the commands. Now we have different type of shell available. Like we have bash shell or we have JSS shell. What kind of shell we are using that we can display using the command echo dollar shell. Let's try that command echo dollar shell. So it will display like I am using the bash shell. Similarly, if you are using JSH shell, then it will display JSH as the output. So why we are using echo here is like echo is a kind of print statement. It is going to display the output of the variable passed here. It will be treated as a kind of input to this command. So shell is actually the environment variable that I will be discussing later. What is environment variable and dollar it is used to display the value of this environment variable. So I'm getting output as bin bash. Now, once we are logged in into any of the machine, some of the quite few details we will be seeing on the front page. Once we are logged in, what are these details actually? This is showing that I'm logged in as an EC2 user. Since I'm, I have created an AWS machine, so I am logged in as an EC2 user. Now at the date is separator. The next is host name of my machine. What is the name of this machine? How this machine is identified in this network using, the, using this name. Now what is this still sign? This still sign actually represent that I am inside the home directory. Like my current directory is pointing to the home directory of EC2 user. Let's try this PWD command. So it is showing like I'm currently pointing out to the home EC2 user folder. So PWD actually shows the present working directory. As I already mentioned about the host name. So host name is basically the name of the server by which it will be identified in the network. How to display the host name of your machine? Host name. Okay, so it is showing the host name of my machine that is DevOps hyphen demo. The same name is shown here also. Okay, now we will go through few of the commands that will be frequently used in our day to day life. So those are like uh, ls, ls hyphen a, pwd, these commands we will be mostly using. Let's get to the first command that is PWD. As I already discussed, it is pointing to the current working directory. So currently I am inside the home EC2 user folder. Okay. So next command is LS. So inside this folder, whatever contents are there. So that will be displayed using the LS command. Okay. After that, let's say I create a file using touch devops.txt. So touch why we use touch is just to create an empty file. It is going to create an empty file devops.txt inside our current working directory. Okay. If I do ls now, it will display me the devops.txt file what I have created just now. Now we have argument also that we can pass to the ls command. The first argument like l. So it will display you the long list of the values like uh, 
what is the permission on this particular file on devops.txt uh, who is the owner of this file which group it belongs to when it was created so all those kind of long listing detail we can see using the ls l command so uh, this linux permissions i will show in a separate video i will make a different video for this one because it is a very important topic that is linux permission so i will try to make a separate video for that so now the next basic command is mkdir why we use mkdir it is used to create a directory okay let's say we are creating a directory let's say test we will create okay so again pointing to the same directory i have created a folder that is test this was a file that was created using touch option and test i have created using the mkdir now if i want to go inside the test directory how to go that cd cd is for the change directory cd test okay now my current working directory will be pointing to the test folder now whatever activities or whatever commands i will run over here that will be executed inside these this folder okay so cd we are using to change the directory now if we want to go one level back or means one level back directory then we have cd dot dot option okay so currently we are inside the test directory and if we want to go inside this ec2 user then we have cd dot dot it will go one level back okay again with ls i forgot to mention we have one more argument that is a so a will actually show me all the hidden files these are the hidden files so that will be viewed using the argument that is hyphen a with ls okay apart from that i think i am done till here what actually we wanted to achieve here is like whatever activities we are doing from the gui that is graphical user interface like opening a folder or creating a new file how we used to do in the windows so how is that possible from the command line tool as we will be mostly working on linux infra using the command line tool instead of gui interface okay so now we will go into the environment variable concept so what is environment variable so it actually allowed to customize how the system works and the behavior of the applications on the system okay so if you have worked with a programming language so you must be declared few of the variables that might be changing based on the infra we are using like if we are using centos then use this kind of environment variables or uh, based on the configurations also we can set it so again this concept is same in the linux also so here when i was trying to use eco dollar path so here path is actually a environment variable what it customize it like it will specify the directories to be searched for a find command let's try this command first if i run this command so it is showing me these many locations or these many folders what it is trying to say like if you want to search for a file or directory so then let look that file inside these folders first look into this directory then look into this directory then look into this directory so this is kind of a environment variable that we have defined that we have not actually defined that is kind of system defined environment variables okay even we can set our own environment variable also how to set that is using the export command export let's say name this is the environment variable name and then i will give some value let's say devops if i want to display the value of this variable then again i have to use the echoes command okay echo name it will give me output as a devops okay now this change is not permanent once i log out or once i change this session once i log out in from this session this value won't persist so to make this change permanent we have to modify the value in the bash rc file how to do that if i list the content inside this directory means inside the home directory then we have a file called as bash rc file so again we have to make the change in this file to make the changes permanent so let's open this file we have, we are in linux we are using vi editor to modify any file okay let's open this file now we need to define the variables here let's define it at end the, at the end okay export let's say i will give test equal to demo 
Now I have to source this file so that our changes will be reflected. Okay. Now cat this file. Cat is actually used to display a content of the file. Okay. Now if I do cat of this, so it will be showing the value which I have edited, edited just now. Now do echo dollar test. It will give me the value demo. Okay. So this is the concept of environment variable and how to make it permanent in our system. Now we'll discuss about the next command that is alias. Why we are using alias is actually it is used to set short names for a long command. For example, let's see if I am using cat command on this bash rc file. It will display the, me the content of bash rc file. But I am finding it difficult to enter in this much long command every time. And I want to give it a short form. So in that case, I have to go with the concept of alias. Again, you, to make this change permanent, you have to edit the bash rc file. Okay, let's copy this command. Open bash rc file and at the end, add alias for this command. Alias test1. And then this command. Okay. Now save this file. Again, you need to source this file. Cat this file. Okay. Now, if I run test one, then it will display me the content of this file because instead of this command, I am writing test one now. Okay. Now it is showing me the content of that file. Okay. Now, as I have shown, cat we are using to display the content of the file. But in case if you want to create a new file and at the same point you want to write into that file and save it. So in that case you have the redirection operator. So let's try this concept of the redirection operator. Okay. Clear is actually used to clear the screen. Okay. Now I will write cat redirection operator devops.demo or devops.txt let's say. And I will write content as this is learning. Okay. Now enter and to save it, press Ctrl C. Now do ls and now do cat devops.txt. So whatever I have entered here that is saved into the file devops.txt. Okay. I hope I have covered all the commands for our first session on Linux. Also, please check out this GitHub link. I will share some assignments also here. You can try that on your system and ask me if you have any doubts in the comment section. If you like the video, please comment and subscribe onto the channel. Till then, bye-bye.